guys welcome back to paradise plastics today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to make your own soft plastics out of plastisol and whatever colors and whatever flakes y'all want today we're going to be doing the green pumpkin color with uh we'll figure out the flakes later on but yeah this is unlike other videos because we're going to be going really in depth on how to do it uh, unlike the others where they kind of show a little bit but not that much and so um yeah, hope you guys enjoy. and right now we're about to be making some soft plastic baits using some glue molds and some aluminum molds from Bass Tackle. That's a great place to go get them. And pretty much all you need is a two cups measuring cup or really just any kind of Pyrex measuring cup. This is just an off-brand one I found at the dollar store. They're getting them for really cheap. And pretty much you need Plastisol. I got mine from Lure Works and it's just the medium blend porosol and plastisol is pretty much just kind of what makes the lures if you add it to color and you have flake that pretty much makes the colors and stuff and over here these are all my colors over here and these are all my flake so these are what i'm going to make all the colors from so you can't you can't really make you know green pumpkin chartreuse or anything like that without any of this stuff over here and pretty much to start off, what I want to do is kind of just shake it up just so the two compounds in this can mix. Because if you don't shake it, the thick resin, which makes it clear and plastic, will just stay at the bottom. And we'll just have this clear, milky, not good, not good for anything kind of stuff. So you want to shake it and just pour. We're probably just going to pour about a cup in there. Because, yeah, that's just what's best since we're not going to make a whole lot of lures out of this stuff yeah and yeah and a little over is not that bad it's just more more plastic to use and if you ever have like a book or anything one cup is what is going to be based off of because you're going to have like 40 drops of like chartreuse for one for every one cup you kind of need to measure in cups so you can do every two cups i just prefer just one cup Oh yeah, and gloves, you're going to need these gloves because this crap will burn you. I've tested it, Maxwell's tested it, and it hurts like crap. Don't, these gloves just, these are pretty high quality gloves. I mean, they're used a lot, but we're going to put it in there for two and a half minutes just to get it started. And yeah. We just decided while the plastic is cooking that we'll just give you some prices on the stuff. So I picked this up off of eBay. It's got 170, 175 milliliter uh, injector and it was about 55 to $60. I can't really remember. So over here with your flake. Over here with your flake. These are depending on what how much you get. So this is going to be about... This is going to be about 4 ounces, and that's .008 gunmetal, so we don't really use that often because it's not going to really often colored. That was about $4, just that one bin, or whatever you want to call it. And over here, here are color, that's watermelon, to make watermelon red, watermelon sea, that sort of stuff. Anyway, that cost about 2 to $3 just for this one little bottle, because it's only 2 fluid ounces, so... You, you can usually get a whole lot out of that anyway. And this is worm oil. So if you ever get like a pack of zoom worms or even our worms in the future, you're gonna feel this if it's like liquidy or kind of slick or in the inside, this is what it's gonna be. It just kind of helps to stay fresh and that sort, that sort of thing. Right here is soft. So if we ever decide that our worms are too hard, 
just pour a little bit of this in there and pretty much all it does is just popping it up just like the name yeah and these aren't necessities these are just things to make to make the experience in the baits better yes and let's see and our plastic just finished so we're just gonna open that up real quick and this is where you need a glove to grab the hot cup thing yeah, yeah. and always keep your stuff clean because i just got done finishing up we're using watermelon red and make sure to clean stuff up because i've had mistakes before where i've accidentally put in wrong colors and the wrong kind of worms and yeah okay, here's uh -huh. our uh, watermelon red we just did we're letting it sit there while we do this one yeah and i've actually mixed them with the wrong color it didn't really turn out that good and so yeah he just melted the plastisol for about two and a half minutes with your plastisol what you're going to want to do is stir it up and have a heat gun ready so i just measured this and it's around 221 degrees your target temperature is going to be about 350 so once again you're going to want these gloves because you do not want to get burned so we're probably going to put it back in there for another two minutes until it's clear so yeah interested in actually getting into this stuff these are what your molds are going to look like so it'll show you but this is this is a do it mold so pretty much it tells you everything you need to know and on the inside this is what it looks like so right here it's just the normal shape of it but over here you'll see it how it has these little air vents so it didn't like clog up or have that many air bubbles in it and then yeah we have right here a frog and then you might know this is a fluke but it's technically called a jerk bait yeah so this is what a fluke slash jerk bait would look like right there with like the little indention in the stomach and then we have a small crawl crawfish mold and then a few small worms yeah so typically we're you're not going to see us pouring this jerk bait because these air vents were not designed very well and it has a whole lot of dents in them so i do not recommend the do it molds jerk bait yeah and do it is the brand's name if y'all didn't pick up on that yeah so do it is also they're going to be your cheaper mold options but they aren't as high quality as these aluminum molds so you can get do it molds for like 30 bucks at barlow's tackle and 35 dollars at tackle warehouse and a ton of different options and with these these are going to be about 30 no i'm sorry 80 to 120 bucks a piece depending on how many cavities you get and how, how big it is and yeah. what it looks like and uh our plastic saw just finished and as y'all can see it's pretty clear unlike earlier when it was kind of white so now we know that it's either almost done or done so we're going to scan it with the heat gun real quick so this feels already this already feels kind of just almost done because it's pretty thick you see it's kind of like a gel more than a liquid so i just scan this and it's 317 degrees roughly so we're just going to put it back in there for maybe another minute just uh just a liquid it up and like I said earlier with the worm oil it's not only just packaging kind of stuff so you can also put it in your injector whenever it gets kind of feels kind of hard to pull out and push in so what we're gonna do we're just gonna go ahead and put some in there kind of like oil for I don't know like a lawnmower or something yeah and we're gonna put just a couple drops in there just to make sure it's slick yeah see it's not taking me near as long as it did just a second ago and yeah and that's going to help with the uh, quantity of how much goes into the mold so you don't overflow it a lot but you don't not do enough if that makes sense yeah so pretty much what happens is whenever you get done pouring the mold is that it'll just stop like you can't press anymore and if it's not slick and it just like bumps like every second you may not know whenever it's done so you may have to take it out and it's extremely hard to get it back on because everything's already thickened up so now last stalls are done it should, should be it's pretty much done yeah and what we're going to do is we're just going to stir it up a little bit 
it does have a little it does have some bubbles in there so we're just going to put it in the vacuum chamber and what the vacuum chamber does is that you put it in there and it sucks all the air out of the plastic so that when you make the baits the plastic doesn't have any bubbles in it and the bubbles are going to cause it to have like little air pockets which are kind of like they're not hard like they're not they're not Makes thick. It hollow. Yeah, it's like hollow, so it's not thick and dense like the normal bait would be. Pretty much a dent is what. Yeah, it like makes. the. So what we're gonna do is gonna turn it on. So they turn like, it on right there. This this little chamber right here it was we got it from Amazon for about fifty dollars, but the pump over here is gonna be about a hundred fifty to two hundred dollars if you're ever looking to get one and start doing this or just for other stuff and um one more thing before we start this one thing we recommend is that you have a fan right here so when you pull the stuff out this uh the smell of the plastic when you melt it is not the best for you so if you can have a fan right here blowing this like the blowing the fumes away that would really help yes so pretty much what we're gonna do It'll, uh, sometimes it'll go to the top right there and we'll have to we'll just have to let it out early so our target range is around negative 30 that's what you want to get to because that just means all the oxygen is out of there so if you notice we stopped it early and that's because the plastic ro rose too much and that, that'll make it so that the plastic will get sucked into the vacuum and then yeah. that'll be annoying because you'll have to get it out yeah you'll have to take apart the entire thing just to get a little bit of plastic out and we don't want that so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take it out take it out stir it up and then just put it back in there and depending on how thick it is you may want to put it back into the microwave but we're just gonna it's good enough see it's not it's more of a liquid than a gel so we're just gonna put it back in the vacuum chamber chamber like he said it's really not the best air for you to breathe in and it also smells pretty bad so we're just gonna go ahead and turn this on so we don't breathe it in we have the street just right up there and it should just evaporate or whatever in the yard Because we had to put it in the vacuum chamber, it lost a little bit of heat. Yeah. So we're gonna put it back in the microwave for about 30 seconds to a minute just to get the heat back in there. And then we're gonna be adding the color. All right, so we just got it out of the microwave. The fan was on there for a second just to once again blow the stuff away. So here Grace stirring it. And there's still a little bit of bubbles that but we can just put in the back in the vacuum chamber later if it gets really bad. So pretty much what we wanna do now is we're gonna get the green pumpkin coloring. Let's see if it's hidden behind here. Green pumpkin by Lure Works. These are uh, this personally my favorite green pumpkin. Then we're gonna get some 0.035 black flake. So Lurecraft, just a little differentiation. Lurecraft is a little bit more expensive than the Lure Works glitter. So this is gonna be Lure Works right there. And then this is gonna be Lure Craft. So pretty much the difference is this one, the Lure Craft, it is gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it is a whole lot more heat resistant than this one over here, which is like maybe a dollar to 50 cents cheaper. And this one, you have to be a little bit more careful with. So today we're just gonna be using the Lure Craft just cause 0.035 glitter is, what, is what's used in everyday green pumpkin. And so, uh, didn't you say those were two to four dollars? These were three to four dollars at the most. It's probably like three bucks. And this thing right here was probably like three seventy-five to four dollars. So not that bad. Yeah. So pretty much what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a little bit of green pumpkin, preferably forty drops, but I already have like already know 
how much to put in there so i'm just gonna pour it in a little bit but yeah whenever you're doing this you want about 40 drops of the color you want just to get the good color so i'm just gonna yeah well, if you if you're just starting out then you definitely want to measure out the drops and then later on you can get to doing this and also whenever you're mixing in your color if it does seem a little darker than you want what i have figured out is that in the cup it is going to be a little bit darker than what it, than what it's actually going to be so don't worry if you think it's a little darker than you want so when you pour it into the molds and let it dry and stuff it's going to be lighter yeah so pretty much what we're going to do is we're just going to pull some up out of the out of the thing just to see what the color is probably going to look like that's probably the closest of what we're going to get to what it looks like so we may add just a tad more and then we'll add the black flake. And so uh, now that the plastisol is melted, you're gonna see us put it in the put it in the microwave a few more times, but that's only to like to regenerate the heat that like had in the first place. And then when we take it out and add all this stuff to it, it loses that heat. So that's the reason we're putting it in the microwave, not to melt it anymore. And also be sure to shake up your colors before you use them because I figured out it doesn't even have color. If you just pick it up after a day of using it, it will be really watery. And so you just have to shake it up just a little bit and it'll be good. Mm -hmm. So, and also whenever you take the lid off of your, um, after, right after shaking it up, what you want to do, you probably want a napkin nearby because it's going to have a lot of coloring in the lid after you take it off and pretty much it'll get all of you like it just did to me so I guess just turn it off right now. and yes this is our uh, signature pink spoon yes bye barbie oh i don't even know yeah Oh, and so uh, another thing you're gonna want, you're gonna want these uh, little measuring spoon, like yes. tea, it goes one fourth teaspoon, one half teaspoon, uh, three fourths teaspoon, and then a teaspoon, then same thing with tablespoons. Uh, but for glitter, we're really just gonna use this one, this one fourth teaspoon, so y'all can get a good angle on that. Yeah, so this is really all you're gonna use unless like you, I have a color just overloaded with glitter, then you're probably going to want to use this half teaspoon. There's only a couple colors that do that, so we're only yeah. really going to use this. So, what we're going to do now is we're we're going to put it in the microwave for just 30 seconds just to get it right, put it back up to temperature. And uh, another thing I really like about this plastic is that if you mess up, it's not a problem because you can just remelt it and do the same thing again and if you spill it like let's say like this it's all over the spoon in about 30 seconds that's all going to be dried up you pick the spoon up and peel it off and put it back in the cup and then you can remelt it so yeah, and don't stuff. Even, so yeah don't even worry if it gets all over the table so pretty much all you have to do if it's like a little strand or string or whatever you can just peel it right off and it comes all up together mm-hmm yeah, just a little uh, I don't know, comment. If you notice, we're not using the fan right now. It's, we're not hypocrites or anything, but like we don't want the audio to be bad. It'd be pretty pretty bad if we had it on right now. But if you ever see us doing it in person, not on video, we're probably going to have the fan on. Alright, so now he's going to get that one-fourth tablespoon and just get a fourth tablespoon of this black glitter. And this entire thing is just glitter, black yeah. glitter. So what we're gonna wanna, what we're gonna want to do? We're just kind of maybe just overflow it, just tap it, just to make sure it's evened out a little bit. And then we just pour it all in there. And you're probably gonna want to get a different spoon so that it doesn't collect all the stuff. Yeah. So I get this spoon, and then you're gonna want to just stir it all in. So we're just gonna stir it in. Oh yeah, and be careful when you open the top of your glitter, cause sometimes the glitter sticks to the top and then when you open it, it'll go flying everywhere. We've had that happen. Yes. And try not to have your fan going either whenever you have the glitter. Oh yeah. Cause we had, I had an accident once where I just opened the glitter and it went everywhere all across here. And 
I'd clean it up for like an hour. And yeah, we're just gonna stir this in and we'll see in a little bit whenever we have it all evened out and stuff. So I'm no I noticed that whenever I pull this out, it is a little bit less glitter than I want. So I'm probably, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my black flake again and just do a little bit. Just do a little bit. And also when buying your glitter, you're gonna want the most of 0 0.035 because that's the most commonly used glitter of like any kind of color. So, it's just medium. So it's, what does it mean when it says 0 0.035? Like, is that a fraction of what? That's just how, that's just how um, big it is, just kind of across. So that's, this is hex cut. So yeah, that's for, just from side to side. That's 0 0.035. Inches, centimeters. Yeah, probably, I think it's inches. Okay. Uh, yeah. You can buy 0 0.015, 0 0.035, 0 0.065, 0 0.125, and the string glitter. And I see that over there. It says 0 0.008. Yeah. Is That's, that like miniature? Yeah. So the most commonly commonly used 0 0.008. Um glitter is going to be your silver just because it's very you can put it in almost any color e even if you make it a color it's gonna, it could pretty much look good in anything everything else just kind of has to be for very certain and it's just customizable really yeah and so you don't have to follow these exact instructions when making your baits you can always change it up a little like if the fish are liking certain colors at different times of years you can like toss toss in different flakes to mixed together yeah and that's the thing you can choose what you do it doesn't have to be a set and stone color so what we did whenever we first started we accidentally made two two different colors because we accidentally added in we just kind of went with it and added glitter and we ended up making a really cool gun color powder. yeah really cool it was gunpowder and watermelon midnight right here yeah okay we took a little detour there because we had to go take a break for a while and yeah if you know to change your scenery that's kind of why anyway our plastic should be done now and we'll see if we can start pouring yeah we just put it back in the microwave it wasn't in there the whole time yeah so we put it in for about a minute maybe yeah i put it in there for like a minute and a half all right minute and a half and right now it's 378 so that that should give us enough that's time perfect. That should give us enough time to put in the vacuum chamber just in case there's any like spare All bubbles right. or anything. So, y'all don't have to really buy a very expensive microwave microwave at all. I just bought this one for fifty dollars at Walmart, and it does the job. Yeah, nothing has to be really high end, yeah. um, unless you really want the best results. But even then, it just yeah. has to be like decent material you can always just google it see what see what uh brands are the best like lure works makes really good colors like color and stuff and uh yeah they also make good glitter um so yeah just google it and see what your price range is how much estimate do you think it would take to get all of this like maybe not as much of this mm -hmm. but just the requirements to um. like start it Probably just to get it started, probably around two hundred dollars, two hundred to three hundred dollars, because you have to get the microwave, the ejector. Those, that's already a hundred dollars. Yeah, the molds, there. the colors. Yeah. All so right. Think, that may be actually, if you count the molds, that's probably four hundred dollars. All you right. To, you can get really expensive. Yeah. So if y'all are looking, just think somewhere between three to five hundred dollars. Yeah. If you want to get decent. Uh, yeah, like decent stuff. So yeah, I'm on the vacuum chamber, and then we should be pouring pretty soon. Yep. Just put it out of the vacuum chamber. Here's what it is. He's stirring it up real quick. Okay. Right now it is 3:38. Okay. Yeah, it should be good. All right, so here I'm gonna get the syringe. Yeah. And whenever you inject, you're gonna want two gloves because this thing, since since it's aluminum. It gets extremely hot. Like it'll burn, it could burn your hand off. Like it burns my hand through the glove. That's how hot it is. So what you're what you're gonna want to do 
Go put it all the way down. Inject as much as you can, depending on how many clears you're gonna make. What you do, you put it down over the hole. There's like a hole there. What you you put it down on there. Put a lot of pressure and just push very slowly so it doesn't flash. And I'll explain to you what that is in just a second. Just top it off maybe a little bit. And uh, making a mess isn't the isn't bad because like I said earlier, you uh, when it dries, it, uh, it hardens. You can just peel it right off and put it back in the cup. So over here, yeah, like that. That's easy. That'll just dry up. Yeah. And. It, and it peels right off too. That's yeah. the great. That's the best part about it too. So what is flash? So yeah. So flashing means first to explain it. Uh, you have to know that whenever you inject uh, fishing lures, just kind of the plastic all into the mold. The air. There's some air in there. So what the producers of it will do is they'll make little, just very tiny little gaps between where it's just enough for air to get out and not enough for the plastic just to seep through it but sometimes if you put enough pressure into into it and your plastic saw is hot enough it'll just go through right to the gaps and just messes up your movers yeah it'll like connect them with a really thin layer of plastic saw and it's extremely messy to start working with so and the best part is you can just remelt it but it, it gets really annoying once you start having it so, yeah. And so, if you are wondering, this doesn't take long at all. It takes maybe five minutes tops for it to dry. Yeah. So, this may be... Or, never mind. But, uh, yeah, you're just going to want to peel the top off, cut it uh, with scissors if you have those. It, if you're mm -hmm. OCD like me. Yeah, I just yeah. do that because I don't want, want it to be messy whenever I turn it off. I'll take it off. It's also easier to manage. Yeah. And all this stuff on the side too, once it dries, it just peels right off, yeah. right, al right along with all the stuff, all the other stuff on the side. So yeah, and then you're just going to want to open it and take it out and pull it off the strand. And also key to having a good successful mold, and also kind of determine if you flash or not, are these grips. These are Irwin quick grips, I'm, I'm not really sure how expensive they are, but I do know they work really well, because if you were to inject with just the mold, not not the clamps, they would just come apart. These things, they just hold it together so it doesn't come apart or flash. And sometimes if you don't have these tied enough, that's, that could be another reason just for it to flash too. So yeah, we're gonna let these dry and we'll see y'all then. Pretty much you're gonna know it's dry whenever you can do this. This is just the OCD part of doing it. Yeah, so um, it's been a few minutes, it's dried and you're gonna know when it's dried yeah like when you just said when you can cut it or you can peel it off without it being hot yeah you just peel it right off and then put it back in here okay and now you just loosen these clamps Hold on this one they're not right they're not ready just yet oh and also um a way to know if they're ready or not is if the side if is if the sides of the metal is really hot if it's really hot, then it's not ready. But if it's like kind of warm, then it's ready. Yeah, and if and it's so, just cold, then it's obviously ready. Yeah. Like this one, for example, is ready. Yeah, this one is not even that warm. It's probably like 90 degrees. Probably just as hot as football workouts. Yeah. So, um. So. And yeah, that's not the end of the world if you can just unclip them and then you realize they're done. Because they're not going to come out anymore because it's somewhat molded. And so if you want, you can even stick these in front of the fan, but we're not going to do that because of audio purposes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you want to open that one? Yeah, so this one looks like it turned out really good. So, once again, these are green pumpkin yes. uh, frogs right here. And just to help it cure, cure and let it harden up, so right now it's a little squishier than it should be. So we just put them in this little bath just to help it cool down. And yeah. Yeah, to harden the plastic. Yeah, and you don't want to leave them in there too long because I heard they, it does make it pretty cloudy and it makes air bubbles kind of pop up a whole lot more easier than they will if you just kind of... Yeah, these are the ones I was showing you on, on our last video. These are the same ones, except maybe a little different color. Yeah. But they still work really well. And he's selling them too, so if you want to just, uh, if you want to order some, yeah, he's to, happy to... Hmm. Yeah, you, you could just... Mess with me on fish friend, I'll be happy to do something. I'll even do a video on it too. Just to 
shout you out and just shout out my top major course. And soon I'll be getting a twin injector. If you don't know what that is, it's just how you make multicolored lures. So like half. Have you ever seen like a bandito bug or something? Uh, pretty much it'll be like half, half orange or half blue or whatever. That's what. It'll... So like both. So there's two different colors on the bait. It's like one half is gonna be one color and one half the other color. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's what that will do, and soon I'll be able to do multicolors, pretty much. And, yeah, those will be available. And we're hoping soon, once we reach at least, I'd say, 75 subscribers, yeah. we can start doing maybe monthly giveaways yeah. of that, these baits and stuff. Yeah, and y'all can even start, like, suggesting, like, what kind of colors you want to see us do, if you want to see us do it or not. So, yeah, we're about to open the crawl mold, see what yeah. it, it looks like. This is a little crawl. And the most satisfying part is pulling it off the thing. Yes, there is nothing like pulling it off this little part. You ready? It may seem kind of dumb, but it, once you do it in person, it is absolutely amazing. There's nothing like it. And this one's probably the most satisfying just because there's multiple of them. Yeah. And yeah, these are the worms. Cool. Yeah, and we've got a lot of stuff planned for the upcoming weeks. We've got a lot of videos planned. So here are the worms. Yeah. Okay. Cool shot. All right. So uh, yeah, he's just gonna put them in here. So these frogs, yeah, it's a few more minutes. Yeah, there'll be more videos to come. Okay. Yeah, so uh, another important part is you're gonna wanna cut up the big chunks. Like, yeah. let's say these turned out really bad and we wanted to remelt them. Mm -hmm. So we would just cut these up a few times, put them in there and then remelt it. And the reason you want to cut it up is because it's a really big chunk, so it'll take a while to melt. But if you put it in there for too long, then the other stuff will burn while that is just starting to melt. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna want it to, you're gonna want to make it all like the same size. Yeah. And yeah, and it just melts a whole lot more easier whenever it's smaller too, so yeah. So one more thing we thought would be important to know is when you're done with this, uh, there's still gonna be some of this inside of the syringe because it didn't push it all out. So yeah, if it stops a little bit early, it's normal. It happens. So, and so yeah. here's what you're gonna do if it's ever like stuck in there. We're just gonna push it out as hard as we can. And, and here's like the clump of uh, stuff that dried inside. And yeah. this is gonna happen after all the... Everything's done. Af yeah, after every time you do it. Yeah. So just cut that up. Yeah. And, and then... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're done. Yeah. So this is what you got right here. Mm -hmm. And so if you are wondering why this seems a little lighter color than this, and like this is lighter than that, it's cause this is like a lot thinner material and this is thicker. So therefore it's like, I guess more dense and you can't see through it mm -hmm. easier, like as easy. So like, there's a frog. It has the places to put the hooks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I use one-out hooks. And so, they they gotta be somewhat small. They can't be big Texas rig hooks. Yeah. So, yeah, these are a little smaller than what you would normally use on a Texas rig worm or whatever. But, you know, they work really well. Cause these, these paddle action is really amazing. Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll get you a lot of they'll get you a lot of bass. So uh yeah, thanks for tuning in to Paradise Plastics. Um yeah, just put in the comments what we should do next. Uh see y'all next time. <laughs>